in my belly only six months ago, huh? Yeah, yeah you were? You were in my belly six months ago? I've always wanted a friend like you Someone I could tell my secrets to And I would hold you all of the time just because you're my Hey guys, it's Brianna and Presley and we're here to do Presley Jane's six month update. I cannot believe we're already at half a year. Time has just flown by and it makes me honestly so sad because there's a likely chance that she'll be our baby of the family. So it's just kind of crazy how fast she's hitting some milestones and we had her six month doctor's appointment so I'll be sure to talk to you guys about that. I'll talk a little bit about how breastfeeding is going at six months along and I'll share just a postpartum update and I've gotten so many requests for a postpartum belly shot so I will include that at the end of this video as well. But first, let's talk about Miss P. She has so many nicknames from P, PJ, Chick P, Sweet P. What else do we call you? Prez. Daddy calls her princess quite a bit. She's definitely a daddy's girl, but she's a tough chick. She's not just a princess. There's, there's a lot more to this girl than just being a princess, huh? Yeah, you tell him, sister. Here, I'll get you a little coffee. This is her favorite toy of the moment. But yeah, I'll go over her stats because at her doctor's appointments, we got them all. She's currently 16 pounds, 15 ounces. She's wearing size 12 month clothes, size three diapers. And I swear she could probably wear a size four at night. That's just kind of my trick to make sure that she doesn't get uncomfortable or wet in the middle of the night. But so far, we're just sticking with the size threes. She is 26 and three quarter inches tall, and she just is so long. Again, she's in size 12 month clothes. She wasn't in the 98th percentile for height this time. I think the doctor said she's like ranging between the 85th to 88th, and she predicted she'll be 5'7 or 5'8, so we'll see. I'm only 5'5, five five, so that means she definitely would have inherited some of daddy's genes. My mom is a bit taller though. My mom's like 5'7, and so is my sister, so I somehow got the short genes, I guess. Um, We'll see. She definitely, I think though, and I'll show you. Can you look in the camera and show them your beautiful eyes? <gasps> show them your eyes. But as you can see, I think she definitely has brown eyes, just like her daddy. Landon has my eyes. Yeah, but you have beautiful brown eyes, just like your daddy. And those lashes, girl, mama's gotta pay for her lashes. You got those lashes naturally. Oh, and she took off her bow just now <laughs> to show you. Her hair is brown. I know she doesn't have a lot of it but I still think it's so sweet. I love your little bald head. And I love when you wear your bows. What, we decided we didn't like that bow very much? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. There you go, girlfriend. Bow back on, okay? Yeah, here, you want your coffee mug? But I laid a blanket out here for her because she's probably gonna go and roll around on it. She's pretty close to crawling though and the doctor definitely said our next appointment will be at nine months. She said, I think she's either gonna be crawling or you're gonna be telling me that she's pulling up and attempting to walk at that point. She just said she feels so strong and that she wouldn't be surprised if she's early to hit some of her milestones. I also thought it was pretty cool. Uh, you guys heard in her five month update at the very beginning, she was saying mama. And at the doctor's office, she was even saying mama and a couple of other things. She even said dada this morning. So she is six months and five days old today. I'm a little late in filming this. Sorry, second child, working mom and hosting Thanksgiving problems. <laughs> um, but she said dada for the first time this morning. So she says mama, dada. She definitely has certain noises for things too. Like she does this like tongue like thing like when she wants something to eat, like her solid food. And I'll get to all of the eating habits here soon. But the mama, the doctor was astonished. She said usually they're not saying consonant sounds until around nine months and that would even be a bit early. So the fact that she's been saying mama, she said watch out, you're gonna have a boss of your family here. And I said, yeah, probably runs in the family and have a little boss lady. <laughs> All right, let's talk about breastfeeding and Presley's eating habits. Breastfeeding is still going well. I'm still pumping three times a day when she is away from me, 
but we have hit a pretty nice stint here once she got her two bottom teeth in where she is sleeping either through the night or only waking once to feed. And the doctor did tell me, she says, if you want to wean her off that night feed, the fact that she has slept 12 hours solid straight the night means she can do it and she's a very healthy weight. So you don't need to worry about giving her that night feed any longer if you want to wean her off of it. So we're going to try to keep doing that. Um, and I think it's really, really been helping ever since we introduced solid foods, but doing at least two, if not three feedings of solids during the day. So she's getting anywhere from eight to 12 ounces of solid food. You know, we feed her until she stops kind of opening her mouth and acting like she's hungry. But generally she eats those 12 ounces of solid foods. She's had everything from peas, green beans, corn, butternut squash is her favorite, pumpkin, carrots, and then the couple of fruits we've done, we've done banana and we've done peaches. Um, and then we've also did, <laughs> because of Thanksgiving, she for the first time had, it was like a turkey and sweet potato mix. Um, we also gave her a little bit of mashed potatoes, but she really didn't like the texture. I don't think she was used to it. Um, and we gave her a vegetable beef mix the one day as well. The doctor also said we could start baby led weaning because she definitely, I mean, you think you can even see here, she's like reaching for anything that's in front of her. Yeah, so I gave her a little bit of cantaloupe, just like a huge chunk of it that she could kind of like reach and gnaw on herself. And again, she made like weird faces. Either she didn't like the taste of it or it could be just like that the texture is different since she's used to the nice pureed baby foods, huh? Yeah. She's also gnawed on a banana a little bit, which I think she liked that a bit better because she could tell how it, yeah, oh, here, you want to go down on the floor? But she is, and I don't know if you can see, she can kind of sit up. But she's such like a reacher for things. She she kind of is a little unsteady there. <gasps> um, but she she sat up for just like a bit on her own. Here, you want to lay down? You want to rattle? You want it? There you go. Good girl. <laughs> Oops. You dropped it. Just grab it. Grab your rattle. There you go. Yeah. And she's like fascinated by tags on things. She was just like pulling the tag on that rattle. Oh. Coley's here. Hi, Coley. Thanks for joining us. Speaking of Coley, Presley is obsessed with her. <laughs> Bye, Cole. Oh, you can't see. She just like rolled to try to see Coley go out of the door there. But, oh, and you also probably just saw she's like throwing things too. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's one of the things Presley and Landon love to do with each other is they'll even roll a ball back and forth or she'll like pick it up and you know, she can't throw it to him with like actual accuracy, but they'll kind of roll and push the ball back and forth to one another. And he also has been trying to teach her to play with his cart, which is like the cutest darn thing in the world. I love seeing them begin to play together. It's really, really fun. So yeah, breastfeeding is still going well. The only issue that I've had is I had mastitis on one weekend just because I'm obviously my body was not used to her sleeping through the night and that happened about two weeks ago now. So it's really only been the past two weeks that we've had, I'd say 50% of the time she's sleeping through the night. The other 50% of the time she's waking up that one time in the middle of the night. And the general rule is since I am the one who's lactating, I don't go in to soothe her if she does wake up before the midway mark during the middle of the night. So I should make that clear. She sometimes will wake up and we'll hear her on the monitor and she'll either cry for a little bit and self-soothe because we leave the pacifier with her in the crib or, or if she has that cry where it sounds like really needy or like something could be a little bit wrong that she's not going to self-soothe and put her back to sleep, my husband will go in, just rub her back, calm her down, make sure she knows where her pacifier is in the bed and she'll go back to sleep if that is like before, anytime before midnight because she'll go to sleep between 6.30 to 7 o'clock in the evenings and then she's usually waking between 6.30 to 7 a.m. in the mornings. <laughs> You're just rolling all over. So then when she wakes up between 6.30 and 7, she'll nurse in the mornings after she gets changed for the day, and then she'll have her first pack of solids before her morning nap. Her morning nap can vary from 30 minutes to up to three hours. She actually on Thanksgiving napped for three hours, which that's really rare. It's more like a 30 minute to an hour long nap. And then she wakes up, she'll have some more milk and then another serving of her solid foods. And then she'll take an afternoon nap. Then she'll usually have some more milk when she wakes up from that nap. 
Um, and then occasionally, and this is sort of varies on whether or not she's at home or on the weekends, she'll either take a car nap while my husband's driving them home after work, or she takes usually a very short afternoon nap. But I do not let her sleep past that 5 o'clock p.m. mark, just because I want her up for at least that like 90 minutes to 2 hours to go to sleep between 6.30 to 7 o'clock. But generally, she's up on her own before 5 o'clock, but just in case like she does happen to take a bit of a longer nap. Then in the evenings for food, she has another four ounces of solid food, nurses before bed. If it is a bath night, we do bath, nursing, and then like book bedtime routine where she does like lotion, her pajamas. And the big thing that I just tried to really consistently stick with is that the environment in her room is very, very familiar. She knows exactly what happens after she gets her pajamas on, the white noise gets turned on, the night light is on and the actual overhead lights are turned off and that's when we do like our nighttime routine of like nursing the bedtime song bedtime book prayer lay her down to sleep she's just chilling over here just so you guys like she's just like right there chilling on the blanket i have baby adhd so bad oh my god um oh but she is a little stinker and she's <laughs> manipulative, I guess I would say. She lets out this really sad, horrible cry the second I go to lay her in her crib. It's like her final way to protest and like trick me into still holding her and snuggling with her. But once I lay her down, it usually takes anywhere from five to 10 seconds. I say, I love you. I rub her back and I say, it's okay. It's nighttime, it's time to go to sleep. I love you, I'll see you in the morning. And she'll stop crying by the time I'm walking out of the room. But she's just such a stinker. It like hurts my heart so much that she gives this horrible cry as I'm trying to lay her down to sleep. But yeah, so those are her stats. That's her feeding routine. That's her sleeping routine. And I'll do a dedicated video on just like sleep training in general, just so you guys can have a good overview of that. I know there's been a lot of requests. I just didn't want to make one until I knew that she was doing it consistently because I didn't want to say anything that wasn't working. And even though what works for us might not work for you, but I would be more than happy to share like exactly what we did for those couple weeks leading up to when she was finally sleeping through the night and now doing it pretty consistently. Some fast things on me postpartum. I don't feel like I have baby blues postpartum anymore. I think there was definitely a couple of weeks, particularly around when I went back to work, where I think that was definitely the case. I feel like something is very real of when you hit six months, that there is just like a shift in both you. I mean, she's obviously now for two weeks been sleeping a lot better, which makes a world of difference. When you are getting regular sleep, you're just so much more of a human. You can think logically. That is just so important for both you and for them. So I think that's definitely been helpful because even with the holiday stress going on, it doesn't feel as overwhelming as like the transition back to work felt because she wasn't sleeping at all. She was still waking like every two to three hours when I went back to work. Um, weight wise, I weighed myself right before Thanksgiving. I haven't weighed myself since after Thanksgiving, but the day before Thanksgiving, I was a 124 pounds, which I was 122 before I got pregnant with her. So nearly back down to my postpartum weight. I will show you my belly. Please don't judge though, because this is after Thanksgiving and after a few days of leftovers. So yeah, this is what it looks like with the shirt on. And then this is the six month belly postpartum. I have a lot of toning goals that I would like to accomplish, but there you have it. And once she hit six months, I actually did sign up for hot yoga. There was a place that was running a special by me and that's pretty much been the extent of my workouts for this last month. Once I was traveling for work pretty much every single week, my exercise routine kind of went out the window um, and like here or there, like if I could walk around like my campus or get in like a walking workout, but I really wasn't doing anything for myself. And like once she hit six months, I was like, you know what? You have to start doing some physical activity both for your physical and mental health. And I absolutely loved hot yoga before I got pregnant with her and Landon because you can't really do it when you're pregnant. Um, and it just helps so much. I feel like I come out of there with a yoga high. It's amazing. And I'm like not perfect. What? Hi. <laughs> 
Um, I'm like not perfect at the poses or anything like that. I'm giving myself some grace before I really push myself in the class, but I just leave. I said to my husband, I'm like, it makes me so happy. It's truly a yoga high when I'm leaving the class and gives me so much energy. But I just want to say now that she is happy or old, I know some of you are new. Some of you have been following me since I even found out I was pregnant with Presley. So thanks so much for following along on this journey. It means so much to have your support and your kind comments. They truly make my day. And if there's ever a question you have about Presley or about me or anything in general, let me know. I will be doing a Q&A coming up, so make sure you're following me on Twitter because that's how I think I'll ask for questions this round or my Instagram. You can direct message me on there as well. And as always, leave questions in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you on there. Wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thanks for sticking around here if you've been following Presley's journey from the beginning. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys! Hey!